Shudanandana Prajajana Ranjana Yashudanandana Prajajana Ranjana Jamunatira Jayam Vishnu Parapana Mahamsa Parivraja Kachaya Astotta Vishatta Shri Srimad His Divine Grace Saisi Bhaktivaranta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jayam Vishnu Parapana Mahamsa Parivraja Kachaya Astotta Vishatta Shri Srimad His Divine Grace Bhakti Saranta Saraswati Goswami Thakur Srila Prabhupada Ki Grantaraj Shima Bhagavatam Ki Go Premanande Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto, chapter 9, answers by citing the Lord's version. And this is the third verse of the Chatur Shloki, the, uh, the four essential texts of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So the Srimad Bhagavatam is, consists of 18,000 verses, and of those 18,000, four of them, uh, the, the essential chatur shloki that uh, describe the absolute truth in a very succinct manner and so there's quite extensive purports by Srila Prabhupada on each of these four verses so, um, so we're going to hear a lot from Srila Prabhupada today which is really good <laughs> so <coughs> Yata Mahanti Bhutani Bhuteshu Cha Bacheshvanu Pravishtyanya Pravishtani Tata Teshu Nateshvaham Yata Mahanti Bhutani Bhuteshu cha vacheshvanu Pravishtanya pravishtani Tathateshu nateshvaham 
Paramahandi Bhutani Bhuteshu Chavacheshvanu Pravishtanya Pravishtani Tathateshu Nateshvaham Tathateshu Bhutani Yata, just as Mahanti, the universal Bhutani elements, Bhuteshu, Ucha Avacheshu, in the minute and gigantic Anu, after Pravishtani entered. Apravishtani, not entered. Tata, so. Teshu, in them. Na, not. Teshu, in them. Aham, myself. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Esa Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki. O Brahma, please know that the universal elements enter into the cosmos and at the same time do not enter into the cosmos. Similarly, I myself also exist within everything created and at the same time I am outside of everything. Purport. The great elements of material creation, namely earth, water, fire, air and ether, all enter into the body of all manifested entities, the seas, mountains, aquatics, plants, reptiles, birds, beasts, human beings, demigods, and everyone materially manifested. And at the same time, such elements are differently situated. In the developed stage of consciousness, the human being can study both physiological and physical science but the basic principles of such sciences are nothing but the material elements and nothing more. The body of the human being and the body of the mountain, as also the bodies of the demigods, including Brahma, are all of the same ingredients, earth, water, etc. And at the same time, the elements are beyond the body. The elements were created first, and therefore they entered into the bodily construction later, but in both circumstances they entered the cosmos and did not enter. Similarly, the Supreme Lord, by His different energies, namely the internal and external, is within everything in the manifested cosmos, and at the same time He is outside of everything, situated in the kingdom of God, Vaikuntha Loka, as described before. This is very nicely stated in the Brahma Samhita 537 as follows. Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavitabhi Stabirya Eva Nijarupa Taya Kalabhi Goloka Eva Nivasatya Kalatma Bhuto Govinda Mari Purusham Bamaham Bhajami. I worship the personality of Godhead Govinda, who, by expansion of his internal potency and transcendental existence, knowledge and bliss, enjoys in his own and expanded forms. Simultaneously, he enters into every atom of the creation. 
This expansion of his plenary parts is also more definitely explained in the same Brahma Samhita as follows. 535. I worship the personality of Godhead Govinda, who, by one of his plenary portions, enters into the existence of every universe and every particle of the atoms, and thus unlimitedly manifests his infinite energy all over the material creation. The impersonalists can imagine, or even perceive, that the Supreme Brahman is thus all-pervading, and therefore they conclude that there is no possibility of his personal form. Herein lies the mystery of his transcendental knowledge. This mystery is transcendental love of Godhead, and one who is surcharged with such transcendental love of Godhead can without difficulty see the personality of Godhead in every atom and every movable or immovable object. And at the same time, he can see the personality of Godhead in his own abode, Goloka, enjoying eternal pastimes with his eternal associates, who are also expansions of his transcendental existence. This vision is the real mystery of spiritual knowledge as stated by the Lord in the beginning. Sarahasyam tad angam cha. This mystery is the most confidential part of the knowledge of the Supreme and it is impossible for the mental speculators to discover by dint of intellectual gymnastics. This, the mystery can be revealed through the process recommended by Brahmaji in his Brahma Samhita 538. Premanjana Churita Bhakti Velochanena Santa Sadaiva Hridayeshu Vilokayanti Yam Shama Sundara Machintya Gunaswarupam Govinda Maripurusham Damaham Bhajami. I worship the original personality of Godhead Govinda, whom the pure devotees, their eyes smeared with the ointment of love of God, always observe within their hearts. This Govinda, the original personality of Godhead, is Shyama Sunda, with all transcendental qualities. Therefore, although he is present in every atom, the Supreme Personality of Godhead may not be visible to the dry speculators. Still, the mystery is unfolded before the eyes of the pure devotees, because their eyes are anointed with love of Godhead. And this love of Godhead can be attained only by the practice of devotional, a transcendental loving service of the Lord and nothing else. The vision of the devotees is not ordinary. It is purified by the process of devotional service. In other words, as the universal elements are both within and without, <coughs> similarly, the Lord's name, form, quality, pastimes, entourage, etc. As they are described in the revealed scriptures or as performed in the Vaikuntha Lokas, far, far beyond the material cosmic manifestation, are factually being televised in the heart of the devotee. The man with a poor fund of knowledge cannot understand. Although by material science one can see things far away by means of televisions, factually the spiritually developed person is able to have the television of the kingdom of God always reflected within his heart. That is the mystery of knowledge of the personality of Godhead. The Lord can award anyone and everyone liberation, mukti, from the bondage of material existence. Yet he rarely awards the privilege of love of Godhead as confirmed by Narad. Muktim dadhati karhichit smatna bhakti yogam. This transcendental devotional service of the Lord is so wonderful that the occupation keeps the deserving devotee always wrapped in psychological activity without deviation from the absolute touch. Thus, love of Godhead developed in the heart of the devotee is a great mystery. Brahmaji previously told Narad that the desires of Brahmaji are never unfulfilled because he is always absorbed in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Nor has he any desire in his heart, save and accept the transcendental service of the Lord. That is the beauty and mystery of the process of bhakti yoga. 
as the Lord's desire is infallible because he is Achuta, similarly the desires of the devotees in the transcendental service of the Lord are also Achuta, infallible. This is very difficult, however, for the layman to understand without knowledge of the mystery of devotional service, as it is very difficult to know the potency of touchstone. As touchstone is rarely found, a pure devotee of the Lord is also rarely to be seen, even amongst millions of liberated souls, kotishvapi mahamune. Out of all kinds of perfections <coughs> attained by the process of knowledge, yoga perfection in devotional service is the highest of all kinds, and the most mysterious also, even more mysterious than the eight kinds of mystic perfection attained by the process of yogic performances. In the Bhagavad Gita 1864, the Lord therefore advised Arjuna about this bhakti yoga. Sarva guyatamam bhuya srinu me paramam vacha. Just hear from me again about the most confidential part of the instructions in Bhagavad Gita. The same was confirmed by Brahmaji to Narada in the following words Idam Bhagavatam nama yanne bhagavato bitam. Sangraha yam vibhuti nam tvam etad vipur li kuru. Brahmaji said to Narada, Whatever I have spoken to you about the Bhagavatam was explained to me by the personal, Supreme Personality of Godhead, and I am advising you to expand these topics nicely so that people may easily understand the mysterious Bhakti Yoga by transcendental loving service to the Lord. It is to be noted here that the mystery of Bhakti Yoga was disclosed to Brahmaji by the Lord Himself. Brahmaji explained the same mystery to Narada. Narada explained it to Vyas. Vyas explained it to Shukadev Goswami. And that same knowledge is coming down in the unalloyed chain of disciplic succession. If one is fortunate enough to have received the knowledge in the transcendental disciplic succession, Surely, he will have the chance to understand the mystery of the Lord and that of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the sound incarnation of the Lord. Om Magyana Timiran Hasya Gyananjana Shalakya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasma Shri Gurve Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Girhadra Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so it's really nice hearing from Srila Prabhupada, so I thought we'll hear a little more from Srila Prabhupada. Um, actually, the, uh, the Chaitanya Charamrita has a, um, has a story of when Lord Chaitanya <coughs> was in Varanasi and he's, uh, he's invited to a uh, uh, meeting of sannyasis who were discussing philosophy and Lord Chaitanya by his uh, association he, he actually attracts the minds of these sannyasis who are discussing Mayavai impersonal philosophy and they actually uh, Due to his association, they become attracted and have a dint of devotional service, and uh, they uh, they inquire from from Lord Chaitanya. To they um they first they hear his his refutations of the uh, Mayavad philosophy, and they're impressed. They 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 agree. That the uh, that the explanations of the Mayavad philosophy are insufficient. After hearing Lord Chaitanya point out the faults in their philosophy, and so then they inquire. They say, "My dear Lord, this is Prakashananda Saraswati. He's the leader of these sannyasis. 
My dear Lord, whatever direct meaning you have given when explaining the Brahma Sutra is certainly very wonderful to all of us. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead and therefore you have inconceivable energies. I wish to hear from you briefly about the Brahma Sutra. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, I am an ordinary living being and therefore my knowledge is very insignificant. However, the meaning of Brahma Sutra is very grave because its author, Vyasadeva, is the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. The purport of the Vedanta Sutra is very difficult for an ordinary person to understand. But Vyasadeva, out of his causeless mercy, has personally expanded the meaning, explained the meaning. If the Vedanta Sutra is explained by Vyasadeva himself who has written it, its original meaning can be understood by the people in general. The meaning of the sound vibration Omkara is present in the Gayatri Mantra. The same is elaborately explained in the four shlokas of the Srimad Bhagavatam known as the Chatur Shloki. Whatever was spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead to Lord Brahma in those four verses of Srimad Bhagavatam was also explained to Narad by Lord Brahma. Whatever Lord Brahma told Narad Muni was again explained by Narad Muni to Vyasadeva. Vyasadeva later considered these instructions in his mind. Srila Vyasadeva considered that whatever he had received from Narad Muni as an explanation of Omkar, he would elaborately explain in his book Srimad Bhagavatam as a commentary on the Brahma Sutra. Vyasadeva collected whatever Vedic conclusions were in the four Vedas and 108 Upanishads and placed them in the aphorisms of the Vedanta Sutra. In the Vedanta Sutra, the purport of all Vedic knowledge is explained, and in Srimad Bhagavatam, the same purport has, ex has been explained in 18,000 verses. Therefore, it is to be concluded that the Brahma Sutra is explained vividly in Srimad Bhagavatam. Also, what is explained in the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam has the same purport as what is explained in the Upanishads. Everything animate or inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. One should therefore accept only those things for himself that are set aside as his quota, and one should not accept other things, knowing well to whom they belong. The essence of Srimad Bhagavatam our relationship with the Supreme Lord, our activities in that connection, and the goal of life is manifest in the four verses of Shema Bhagavatam known as the Chatur Shloki. Everything is explained in those verses. Lord Krishna says, I am the center of all relationships. Knowledge of me and the practical application of that knowledge is actual knowledge. Approaching me for devotional service is called Abhibhaya. By rendering devotional service, one gradually rises to the platform of love of Godhead. Th that is the chief goal of life. On the platform of love of Godhead, one is eternally engaged in the service of the Lord. Please hear attentively what I shall speak to you, for transcendental knowledge about me is not only scientific but full of mysteries. O Brahma, I shall explain all these truths to you, since you are a living being, Jiva. Without, without my explanation, you will not be able to understand your relationship with me, devotional activity, and life's ultimate goal. So, we, this is a really nice sort of explanation by Lord Chaitanya about these four verses. And some of the main points is the... Um, is well, that contained within these four verses, which are an expansion of, as he's saying here, that uh, expansion of Omkar, the um, the sound vibration, the Pranava, the the the, um, the Bij mantra of all creation, uh, Om. That sound vibration contains everything, and and you know we, we've heard. The explanation of the uh, the three sounds a, ah, u, and m, mm, and uh, they they represent the absolute 
and the absolute's energy and the um, the the living entities that are between the two, the Tathashta uh, Shakti. And so Lord Chaitanya is explaining here that these uh, these four verses explain that the, the uh, what's called the Sambandha Tattva, the the nature of the relationship between the that living entity, the Tatashta Shakti, which is thus expanded innumerously as part and parcels of the Lord. And uh, our current situation in the material energy of the Lord. And then the uh, Abhideya Tattva, well, the, the the Prayojana, if we understand the Prayojana, the goal, the ultimate goal of life, which is explained in these Chatur um, Shloki, the, which is um, to seek out the Supreme Lord and to serve the Supreme Lord. That's, um, that, that gives us a, a focus for our, our ultimate goal in life, Prayojana. And then... Uh, the, ac- the actual steps to take to attain that is called Abhideya Tattva. And so they're also explained uh, in these four verses. And so the, uh, the ultimate goal and our current situation and the steps that we can take to achieve that ultimate goal, which is devotional service to the Lord, is, is expanded upon by... Vyasadev, uh, essentially in these four verses, but then even further into the 18,000 verses of the um, Shrimad Bhagavatam as spoken by Shukadev Goswami. So we can see how, uh, how this, the disciplic succession especially, it has this, um, this benefit upon the living entities of Always expanding the information for the benefit of the living entities. That actually uh, everything is con- contained within that sound vibration om. Uh, full realization of the absolute truth, and it's it's um, all stages of realization. You know the um, the initial stage of Brahma Bhuta, the realizing the absolute in terms of its its oneness, uh, and then the uh, Paramatma realization, realization realizing how the ex- the supreme is expanded into every atom and into every universe and present as in a in a localized form. And then the ultimate um, realization of Bhagavan, that we have an, a, an actual eternal identi- identity in relationship to the Lord, who has, is the supreme identity, supreme personality, and that we have a, a, an eternal relationship. And so uh, all these stages of realization, because uh, you know, the, the, this is the, the nature of the absolute truth, it's um, it's realized in in the essence of the omkar, the the sound vibration om, and the 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 system that the Lord has created in distributing this understanding and knowledge is the disciplic succession, and the the special benefit of the disciplic succession is that that the the gurus the authorized acharyas in this line of um, of teachers, they're able to expand upon this knowledge. So we hear that the the omkar is explained in the Gayatri mantra, and even it says it's elaborately explained in these four four verses. So you know that you know. 
we're looking at it that you know this is just four verses, but but in, in comparison to the Omkar, it's, it's, it says that it's actually an el elaborate explanation. Whereas we've got eighteen thousand verses, it's an even more elaborate explanation. And then um, and then Srila Prabhupada has given us his purports and even further explanation. So. So this sort of knowledge is um, the Sambandha Jnana, the um, Sambandha Tattva, it's, it's, Lord Chaitanya explains that it's, um, that he is the center of all relationships and that the knowledge of him and the practical application of that knowledge is real knowledge. So being able to see uh, that relationship within everything so so we've got such an uh, elaborate explanation here about how the the Supreme Lord enters into everything at, and at the same time is outside of everything just like the universal elements earth, water, fire, air, ether they exist in a manifested form you know, the, th the things that we interact with in this material world, but they also exist in a, uh, in a, uh, in an unmanifested form. Krishna explains that in the Bhagavad Gita. He, he, uh, he says that, that, um, that this knowledge deals with that which is, is, um, is he uses Srila Prabhupada uses some interesting words. He says uh, this knowledge is both phenomenal, which means it's dealing with that which is you know phenomenon, it's manifested, and and it's also noumenal, which means that it's um, dealing with things in their original state in relationship to the absolute. So uh, scientists they they study these elements in their manifested state and they also try to understand these elements in an isolated state you know independent from their interactions with other elements um, and so Srila Prabhupada is explaining here that in the developed stage of consciousness the human being can study both physiological and physical science but the basic principles of such sciences are nothing but the material elements and nothing more. So uh, we may be able to study these material elements in the manifested and unmanifested state, but, uh, but we're not going to be able to understand them in you know, their origin, what is the origin of these material elements, and what is the purpose of life. So that's uh, that's the that's the essential instruction that's uh, given in these in these verses is the is the the situation we're in. Sambandha gyan means our, our what is our real identity in relationship to the Lord. And Pariyojana means the, the ultimate goal of life is given. And then the Abhidheya Tattva, which means the, the steps that we take to, uh, to recover our relationship with the Lord. So, I'll ask um, for any questions. Uh, comments from senior devotees, any realizations you can share? Yep. Yes, you are. Thank you. 
Well, putting Krishna in the center means uh, putting Krishna in the center of our uh, activities <coughs> in our, you know, in terms of our occupational activities, our, our, our family activities. Um, there's, you know, giving the results of our work to Krishna, um, hearing about Krishna. So, so rather than putting ourself in the center, putting our own um, sense gratification in the center, then we're putting the service of Krishna in the center, and that's all. Um, that's all, you know, coordinated or um, you know directed by the spiritual master who engages us in service. So, uh, so yeah, that's. That's, that's the goal and um, it's a nice question maybe you can share ways that you put Krishna in the center in your life So what do you mean taking from the duties and not sharing? Um, like they they just wanted um a cup of milk, so they took from the it was prashada? No, it was water. So um you know, um you know, thinking in a way that how can I um contribute to the maintenance of the cows of the temple, how can I do something to help the, the temple practically because I'm working outside or I'm earning some income, how can I contribute to the service? Prabhupada's idea is that every home can become a temple and I think that's 
how the movements are going to expand is more more temples and more homes that are Krishna conscious. Um, so I think, yeah, I think we can um, we can try to see the good in that, appreciate that. Um, any other comments or questions? Thank you, Manish. That was, that was very useful. Okay, Grant Raj Shimabhavutam Ki, Shilapapapad Ki, Go Premanandir.